स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया hello students welcome to today's lecture in the last few classes we have been discussing about the angular momentum operator its eigen functions we have expressed angular momentum operator both both in cartesian coordinate and in spherical coordinate and uh, by defining the operators in spherical coordinate we have also come to a situation of writing down the angular momentum eigen functions in the in uh, spherical coordinates for example this is the expression that we derived in our last class where this is one of the eigen functions of the angular momentum operator corresponding to angular momentum of l where the m value which is the second index occupies the maximum possible value so where the lim uh, when l and m both are equal that is m is l in that case the functional form of the eigen function of angular momentum takes this this form so here uh, we would see what happens when l is 0 so when l is 0 m is also 0 so therefore psi is 0 0 is n sin to the power l theta since l is 0 so this is 1 e to the power i l 5 so since l is 0 that is also 1 so psi 0 0 that means the angular momentum eigen function corresponding to l value 0 is simply n and what is n n is the normalization constant what is its value that we would try to get we to get this normalization constant we must normalize this wave function psi is 0 0 remember this function has theta and phi coordinate so we have to obtain psi star and we have to integrate this over all space and what are the space available here we have two variable two coordinates theta and phi and if you remember the the uh, element to be to integrate along theta axis is not just theta rather it is sin theta d theta and the element that we have to integrate for phi x uh, direct, uh, coordinate is is d phi so these are coming when we convert our dx dy dz the volume integral in cartesian space to the r theta phi the spherical coordinate system so in this case the integral uh, integral here is sin theta d, d theta and for the case of phi it is d phi so when i look at this function psi 0 0 this is simply n so therefore i have n square and since it is a constant i can go ahead and integrate the two functions so sin theta d, d theta it goes from 0 to pi d phi it goes from 0 to 2 pi i already have done this in f, uh, in, in the last class when i integrate sin theta i get cosine theta and i put the limit up at 0 and pi i would get this as 2 and when i integrate this i get 2 pi so n square into 4 pi if if this function has to be normalized this quantity has to be 1 so therefore n becomes 1 over square root of 4 pi and psi 0 0 is nothing but 1 over 4 pi please note here i have an eigen function which is independent of theta which is independent of phi so there is no angular dependence on this function we'll come back to this property when we define some a uh, particular observable uh, to to this function we'll go on in our uh, discussion of this wave function what we would do is that we would take l is 1 so therefore i have one one function psi 1 1 is n the normalization constant sin theta e to the power i phi so here i have used l as 1 in this expression to get this functional form now again i do not know what is n this is what i am trying to get i'll do that by normalizing this function so i would do the same psi 1 1 star psi 1 1 and I, i i should not forget that the volume uh, element i has sin theta d theta uh, d phi so when i use psi 1 1 star i see that sin theta is a real function its complex conjugate it's itself 
e to the power i phi is a complex function, so I have to be careful when I evaluate its complex conjugate. So, I am left with n square, I would first write down the uh, theta terms. So, sin theta for each uh, for psi 1 1 and psi 1 1 star also sin theta. So, therefore, I have sin square theta and then I am writing sin theta d, d theta that is coming from the integral. And I am now dealing with e, uh, e to the power i phi. So, its complex conjugate is e to the power minus i phi, e to the power plus i phi d phi. And this limit is 0 to pi, this limit is 0 to 2 pi. When I look here, this term e to the power minus i phi, e to the power i phi give me 1. So, therefore, this is 2 phi and when I integrate this, this simply becomes 2 pi. This is easy. So, therefore, I am writing this 2 pi, 2 pi n square and I have to deal now worry about this particular integration. When I have such a situation, what I I would do is that I would express this as uh, instead of writing down sin square theta, I will write it as 1 minus cos square theta sin theta d theta. So, this is 2 pi n square, the first term is 0 to pi sin theta d theta, the second term is 0 to pi cos square theta sin theta d theta. This term I have already seen a few times. So, this is its value is uh, 2. So, I can write this as 2 and what about this? To uh, solve this one, I define, I would do this in this space. So, let us define uh, cos theta as any variable t such that d t is minus sin theta d theta. When d t is min, uh, minus sin theta d theta, so theta goes from 0 to pi. So, therefore, cos theta would, would go from uh, cos 0 to cos pi. So, t would t would go from cos 0 which is 1, cos pi which is minus 1. So, to solve this, I, when I look at this integral over here, so this is z, uh, excuse me. So, this is t goes from 1 to minus 1. Now, I am left with t square d t, d t is sin minus sin theta d theta. So, this minus sign also is, is in included in this term now. So, this is d t and t square d t. So, that you know as t cube by 3 goes from 1 to minus 1. So, minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1 by 3. So, that is that gives me minus 2 by 3. This is the, the result of this. So, 2 minus 2 by 3. So, 2 pi n square 2 minus 2 by 3 is this is 4 by 3. So, I have 8 pi n square divided by 3 and if this function is normalized, so the right hand side has to be 1. In this case, what is the value of n? n is 3 by 8 pi under square root. So, I got this normalization constant as 3 divided by 8 pi under square root and I would use this form over here and then I have the full, uh, the complete functional form of psi 1 1. Similarly, I can write down when L is 2, it, the function will be sin square theta e to the power 2 i phi and so on and so forth for, the, for higher values of L. And in each case, I can of course, normalize the function. Now, this way of writing down the function in this way, I am actually getting, if, if for a given value of L, I have 2 L plus 1 number of eigenfunctions. But this expression is valid for only one of these 2 L plus 1. What about the remaining functions? The remaining functions we can obtain by using 
the our knowledge about the step up and step down operator. So, what we have obtained already is that psi l l which is the uppermost eigenfunction. So, you remember we had this space quantization concept. So, I am drawing this these are the 5 eigenfunctions corresponding to l equals 2 for example. So, this is psi 2 2 this is psi 2 1 psi 2 0 psi 2 minus 1 psi 2 minus 2. Now, this functional form is valid for this when l when m is equal to l. So, when m is equal to l. How would I get 2 1 if I know psi 2 2? The answer is I have to apply l minus operator. So, when I apply l minus operator I would get psi 2 1. How would I get psi 2 0? If I apply l minus operator one more time I would get 2 0 and in this way I will get all other eigenfunctions if I know one of these this eigenfunctions. So, this is the beauty of step up and step down operator that I can once I know one particular solution I can create other states by simply uh, uh, applying this one of the step up or step down operators. Of course, you would uh, see that this is the form form of L minus operator. So, I have when I apply on this function. So, I have to take care of the differentiation with respect to theta, I have to take care of the differentiation with respect to phi and this is mathematically going to be rather complex. The reason why we choose to discuss in uh, the solution of angular momentum eigenfunctions in this way is that the we can provide a general recipe as to how we can <coughs> obtain different eigenfunctions. But what we will do next is that we will try to find, we will try to see what are the general solution of this uh, angular momentum eigenfunctions. The general form of uh, general solution for this angular momentum eigenfunctions are known as spherical harmonics. The form of these spherical harmonics functions are given here. They may appear very scary. Uh, to you, but uh, do not worry about them. We would actually break this down for you, so that this form would, would be very meaningful for you. You can see there are so many terms here in this function. So, this is the general definition of uh, the general form we represent spherical harmonics is that psi or y, y is of often used. So, this is the functional uh, the form. So, instead of psi we are now write, writing y, this is uh, convention. Now, this has some L m terms 1 minus x square. So, where x is defined as cosine theta. So, we know that theta is, is a is one of the uh, coordinate that we have now uh, we know that. So, x is defined in terms of cosine theta again some m there is some p function that will come back and then we see some e to the power i m phi. We will break this uh, break this uh, down uh, break this function down to some uh, easier parts. What we see here is that the first few terms have only theta dependence. You see x has theta dependence. So, in this part of the term is has having theta dependence and this is actually the s term. If you remember we defined our wave function angular momentum eigenfunction as product of two function one s of theta another t of phi. So, this is the s function s of theta and this function is the t of phi function. The t of phi function is rather uh, simple looking, but this s of theta is, is rather complex. The other thing that you would notice is that the t function depends only on one index that is m the second index of this spherical harmonics or the second index of this uh, angular momentum eigenfunction. On the other hand the s function depends both on l and on m. We will discuss more about this s function now. If you look carefully this s function has two, two components. The first component is simply the normalization factor. When you normalize this function, this would actually be the general solution of the normalization factor. If you remember in the pre, uh, a few minutes ago, we tried to normalize this function and we could do for psi 1 1, but for psi 2 2, if you try to do it, you would 
find that this process is uh, somewhat lengthy. Uh, but here there exists the general form of the normalization for factor. The, the other part of this S function is, is given here, which is known as the associated Legendre functions. Here these functions are associated Legendre functions. Again, do not worry about the long name. So, this function simply is 1 minus x square, x is cosine theta. So, 1 minus cosine square theta, the sine square theta raised to the power of m by 2, where m is your second uh, index over here. And then you are differentiating m number of times, depending on what is the value of m. You are differentiating, differentiating m number of times a function which is p l x. This p l uh, function is the uh, well known Legendre polynomials. If you remember in our harmonic oscillator discussion, we, we used the so called Hermite polynomials and now what we are doing here in the, in the uh, while discussing the angular momentum eigenfunctions, we are using the something called Legendre polynomials. So, these are the Legendre polynomials that are given uh, in, in uh, most of the standard textbooks. So, the 0 third Legendre polynomial is simply a 1. The first order Legendre polynomial in the coordinate of x is simply x. Since x is cos theta here, so p 1 of cos theta is, is cos, cos theta. The second order Legendre polynomial is 3 x square minus 1 divided by 2. The third order Legendre polynomials is given by this. So, we once we know this Legendre polynomials, we would differentiate that in, in m number of times and multiply this by this factor and this would be called as associated Legendre function. The Legendre polynomials are given and we can use them to obtain the associated Legendre functions. Once we have the associated Legendre function by multiplying them with the normalization factor, we get this S function and the T functions, T of phi functions are as I, as I said, they are rather simple in uh, uh, their expression. So, this is the general solution for the angular momentum eigenfunctions. What we do next is to write down a few angular momentum eigenfunctions using this general formula. First, let us start with uh, the simplest of them y is 0, 0. So, where L is 0, m is 0. When L is 0 and m is 0, then you can see 2 L plus 1 here is 1, 1 over 2, L minus m, this is mod of m, absolute value of L, m. So, L is 0, m is 0. So, 0 minus 0 is 0, but this is, uh, you have to obtain the factorial of this term. So, factorial of 0 is 1 and similarly here 0 plus 0 and its factorial is again 1. So, therefore, 1 by 2 and this term is rem remains 1. So, under square root and 1 minus x square, x is cos cos theta. So, therefore, 1 minus x square is my 1 minus cosine square theta. So, this is sin square theta, but raised to the power m by 2. What is m? m is 0. So, this is raised to the power 0. So, therefore, this becomes 1. Now, what I have to do is that I have to differentiate this Legendre polynomial of order L. What is L here? Since L is 0, so therefore, I will have to differentiate, I will have to write down P 0 uh, x and then I have to differentiate it with how many times? Actually, 0 times. So, when I am, so this is d to the power uh, d, I have to differentiate it m 0 times. So, therefore, its action is nothing, it is, it is 1. So, I am left with P 0 x. 0 third order polynomial is again 1. So, this is also 1 and finally, I have this last term where this is the t term 1 over square root 2 pi e to the power i m phi. m is 0. So, therefore, e to the power is i 0 phi and this term is also 1. So, now when I collect the terms that are left here, I would have 1 over 2 under square root 1 over 2 pi under square root and this is 1 over 4 pi under square root. If you remember, we had already derived this expression for psi 0 0. So, this general definition is 
this is how we have to use it. We will take one more example. We will take one more example where we will say for y 1 0, where L is 1, m is 0. That case what happens to 2L plus 1? L is 1, so therefore 3 by 2. L is 1, m is 0, so this is 1 minus 0, factorial 1, 1, so this simply remains 3 by 2. 1 minus x square theta, this is sin square theta, raised to the power m by 2, m is 0, so therefore this term will not contribute anything. Now, we will look at this differentiation, so this is differentiation 0 time, so this its effect is 1, so I simply can write p function, the Legendre polynomial which we do not have to differentiate because this is raised to the power m. So, p 1 of x, why do I write 1 here? Because this is p l and l is 1, so p 1 x and what is p 1 x? That is simply x and x is our cos theta. So, therefore, this term I am replacing it as cosine theta and then I look at this t of phi term and e to the power i m phi and since m is 0, e to the power is 0 and this term is 1. So, what is the functional form? So, I have 3 So, this is the 1 0 function of which is which is an eigen function of angular momentum operator when L is 1, M is 0. Let us try to do this for y 1 1. When you do for y 1 1 here L is 1 and M is 1. So, L is 1, 2 L plus 1 is uh, 3 by 2, L is 1 and M is 1. So, therefore, mod of m is 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0, factorial of 0 is uh, 1 and 1 plus 1 and that is uh, 2. So, that is factorial of 2. So, therefore, I am left with 2 3 by 4 under square root and now I am I have to come to the second term 1 minus x square which is x is cos theta. So, x square is cos, cos square theta. So, this is sin square theta raised to the power m by 2, m is 1. So, this is 1 by 2. So, this is essentially the square root of this term and now I have to differentiate this term m is 1. So, mod m is 1. So, I have to differentiate it once and what is p l x? p l is p 1 of x and what is p 1 of x? p 1 of x is x. So, when I differentiate so, this term is x. So, I have dx by dx. So, this term becomes simply 1. And now, I am looking at the next term 1 over square root 2 pi e to the power i m phi m is plus 1. So, when I collect this term, I am left with 3 by 4 under square root. This is 2 pi under square root. So, I am writing 3 by 8 pi under square root sin square theta square root of sin square theta is sin theta and e to the power i phi. If you remember, we got obtained psi 1 1 as, as this form. So, what about y 1 minus 1, where L is 1 and m is minus 1 and not plus 1. When the effect of m is plus 1 or minus 1 is simply seen here, you see in this case, we are taking mod of m. So, whether m is plus 1 or minus 1, this term would not change. So, therefore, we can use the same term. What about here? 1 minus x square m by 2, but here m is also the absolute value of m. So, therefore, here this term also would not change. So, I am left with sin theta. What about this term? Again, since I am differentiating absolute value of m time. So, that even when m is minus 1, I will have to differentiate this function once. So, therefore, I am getting the same term as 1 and finally, I am looking at the t term 1 over square root 2 pi e to the power minus i m phi. Here, m 
in this case it is not absolute value of m. So, here this would matter. So, when I collect the terms I am left with So, this way I can derive different forms of this angular momentum eigenfunctions which are also known as spherical harmonics. I would suggest that you please use this relation and obtain the functional form of when L is L is 2, you will have 5 different values of m, m is minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. Uh, so, in, in this case you would actually be uh, using since L is 2. So, therefore, in that case you will be using P 2 x the second order Legendre polynomial and when you use m equals minus 2 or m equals minus 1 you have to differentiate this Legendre polynomials either 2 times or 1 times depending on what is your value of m. And when m is m is 0 then you see the you do not have to differentiate you just have to use this P 2 P 2 x. Remember, when you use p 2 x you have 3 cos square theta minus 1 divided by 2. So, that exercise would, would uh, enable you to use this general form of spherical harmonics and carry out your discussion. In the, uh, we would just conclude by showing you this general form of spherical harmonics, you would find them in uh, most of the uh, textbooks that, that you would be uh, using, uh, for when you derive your spherical harmonics for L equals 2, please see whether you are obtaining these values or not. In today's class, we discussed about the general definition of the eigenfunctions of uh, angular momentum. We saw that the general solution of eigenfunctions of angular momentum are given by the spherical harmonics, which have three different components, one the normalization factor, one the S function, which depends on theta and another the T function, which depends on phi taken together, we can now write down the spherical, spherical harmonics or the angular momentum eigenfunctions for any value of L and any value of M. Thank you for your attention.